Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, today I have some very special 2A news for you, and I have a special guest here with me, Mr. Michael Cargill. Now, you remember Michael and I um, you have know, done a couple of videos before, or one video before, um, talking about the situation with the Fifth Circuit and how the bump stock case, you know, was moving forward and looking really good for us. And Michael has some very exciting news to share with us because uh, now this bump stock case is going to be going to the Supreme Court. Isn't that correct? That's right. We're headed to the Supreme Court. Uh, so this all started back in 2019 when uh, we filed a lawsuit against the federal government for the bump stock ban. So um, once that went into effect, uh, the lawsuit happened. We went to court, that very first court in 2020, during September of 2020. Uh, we lost that case. We then appealed the, uh, the case to the next court, which was the Fifth Circuit. We drew a three-judge panel. We lost that case. We appealed the case again to the um, Fifth Circuit to be heard on bunk in front of all the attorneys of the Fifth Circuit. Uh, we, and we won that case 13 to three. So we're able to, you know, should have been able to get our bump stocks back. You know, they should have been legal at least in um, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi. And so I was supposed to get my bump stock back as well as anyone else that turned them in. And so the federal government had until um, March to do their, their you know, kind of like in the February, uh, March, their, their, their first appeal. Uh, they missed that deadline. Their very last deadline was April the 6th. And that was at midnight. And so what happened was we're going back and forth with the government. It turns out they had some people, you know, changing you know, positions, moving in and out of that office and stuff like that. So they kind of missed the deadline. So, boom, last night at like almost right at midnight, they filed their appeal to the, to the Fifth Circuit. I mean, to the uh, U.S. Supreme Court. So now this case goes to the United States Supreme Court in Washington, D.C., and we're hoping that the Supreme Court takes up this case because if they do take this case, um, I think this case will have very wide ramifications. It seems to me, Michael, like what they're really trying to do is it, I think maybe they're trying to cast a, a very wide net. OK, so maybe they feel like it's going to go one of two different ways or a combination of, 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 of which. But maybe it's a strategy on their part to go, well, if the Supreme Court hears this and it goes our way, like towards the government's uh, perspective, well, then that's a win which will then allow us to position ourselves uh, to win against the brace, uh, all the brace rulings and everything that are being fought in court right now. But I think the more accurate representation of this situation, you know, I'm not a legal authority, of course, I'm just a redneck with a camera uh, and, and a vision. However, uh, I see it being more that uh, I think that Justice Thomas is absolutely going to get a reckoning and uh, he, he's going to be <laughs> <laughs> I think that if they do hear this this case, which I hope they do, uh, the, the ramifications against the Second Amendment for trying to, you know, arbitrarily ban accessories uh, like they're doing, I think it's going to fall flat on its face. And uh, and I think maybe the tardiness of the of the feds in this regard should indicate maybe that they, they really don't feel too confident. I mean, like if if you think that you're going to, you know, come out on top, well, then why wouldn't you immediately respond? Like, a, you know, it, it's always good to get maybe a, um, you know, a slow yes rather than a fast no. Right. right. So um, we, we'll take the we'll take the slow yes. Right. If we have to. Yeah. And this case is going to change names now. So now it goes Garland v. Cargill. And so we'll see what happens in the Supreme Court. And, and I want to remind people that, you know, under our constitutional system, uh, Congress actually makes the laws, not the Department of Justice or the ATF. And Congress, you know, they did do something with machine guns, and there's a process for machine guns in this country. But it has not banned bump stocks, and so agencies like, you know, Department of Justice, ATF, can't just assume the power to rewrite the law. So by ruling 13 to 3 in our favor, uh, the Fifth Circuit just reinforced the principle that laws are to be written by Congress and not the federal administrators. And if the Supreme Court agrees to, to hear this case, which I hope they will, uh, we are confident that it will uphold the Fifth Circuit's decision. You know, and, and also in a post-Bruin landscape, that really changes things a lot. And I think it's going to be very interesting to see, um, you, know, you know, if we are going to see more 2A cases heard before the Supreme Court, I think that that could be a very positive thing moving forward in a post-Bruin world. 
because Bruin really does just change the landscape so much. And I know so many uh, folks on the Internet and, and various media types and all have, have, have talked about, you know, those implications. But the, the burden of proof falls upon the government to say, OK, well, what historical reference is there to gun control that supports the gun control we have today? Right. Well, you know, that burden of proof now falls upon them to 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 come up with. So, you know, I think that they're shaking in their boots because I think they realize that a lot of of these, you know, dangerous prohibitions against our gun rights that have been, you know, basically just dealt with over the years. I mean, you look at the very situation in New, in New York and New York saying, well, for 100 years, we've had carry laws. Was well, that not longstanding prohibition? Right. Well, just because something has been on, you've been doing something unlawful for 100 years and haven't gotten caught doesn't mean that 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 it's OK for that to occur. You know, so it's just random to me how how people tend to kind of flip it around when, when in reality uh, there was no standing from the very beginning, just like there was no standing for uh, the ATF to arbitrarily uh, make a rule change against bump stocks, or the frame and receiver rule, uh, the the situation with braces, and arguably, okay, if the bump stock situation goes the way that we'd like to see it go, and if it's heard by the Supreme Court, Michael, uh, then what better case do we have, uh, you know, to have, have a good case on the brace rule getting thrown out because the brace rule affects an exponentially larger group of, of people than the bump stock situation. That's right. So, uh, and that's why the, this case, this is the perfect case. Uh, the Garland V Cargill uh, case. You really, I, I look at this um, as helping out quite a few people. Um, I think if we're able to get over this hump with this case, I think we can, we, we will be able to move forward with doing other things um, in the country as well. Yeah. So, you know, I wanted to have you on the channel. I know this is just kind of a, a quick snippet. I, I noticed that you had sent me a few articles on Twitter the other day. So right. look up Iraq Veteran 8888 on Twitter. And you've also got uh, your website set up if people want to help with the legal defense and, and helping out with some funds. What's that website again, Michael? It's, it's michaelcargill.com. Just go to okay. michaelcargill.com. Perfect. Well, this is good news, you know, and I think that it could potentially – you know, go places. And uh, I, I don't want to put the cart before the horse. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to necessarily say that, you know, it's in the bag or anything like that. But it does seem to me, however, that there is a greater interest in two A cases, the Supreme Court, they, they seem like they have shown a greater interest in wanting to hear more two A related cases. So, you know, maybe, maybe they will hear it. And uh, I, I think it'll be very interesting to to see how this pans out and, and hopefully it goes our way, because the fight that you are undertaking, Michael, it affects all of us. And, you know, you're putting your money where your mouth is. You're putting your, your legal expenses out there. You're, you're putting yourself out there, your business out there, your name and your face. Your, your very livelihood is at stake right on this, because, you know, essentially you're, you're you're saying, hey, I'm the guy that's willing to poke the bear. So. You know, this could go really, really, really well, or it could end up being a, a bad situation. But I think I've just got I've got a premonition, man, that this is this is going to go really well. This is great news, and uh, and uh, I really appreciate you going on the channel here to to share some information for my subscribers with me. Here. Absolutely, thank you very much for having me on. And like I said, I'm looking forward to this. It's very exciting. Everyone should be excited about this. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest cases that. I think that we're going to, you know, have in our lifetime. So I'm really excited for this going forward. Right on. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Cargill. And again, guys, make sure you follow him on Twitter. Check out michaelcargill.com if you want to throw a few bucks into the hat because uh, this litigation costs a heck of a lot of money, y'all. So anything you can do to help out is always good. And it's always awesome to have you here on the channel, Michael. And you know that you always have an open microphone on my channel anytime you want to put some information out or talk to folks, you just let me know, reach out anytime, and uh, you're more than welcome on my channel anytime you want. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And as always, more guns equals less crime. Go out there and That's buy right. yourself. That is a fact. Y'all, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. We have so many things on the way. More 2A news, more gun gripes. We got some five guns on the way. We just cut some really awesome cleaning videos that you guys are absolutely going to love. Um, well, I did a Smith & Wesson Model 10-6, full teardown, down to the smallest piece, and we touched up some bluing on that. That was really awesome. And then we did a complete 
uh, tear down on an old school Colt A2, uh, AR-15 A2, which was really cool. So uh, stay tuned for that. Many more videos on the way. Thank you for your time. We'll see you soon.